City. Uh, so there was another car that was, you know, that also happened at the same time, and uh, for Showtime, you know, the main event of Jamal James defending his GameStop belt at 147 against Rad Zap Butea. But before we get into that fight, obviously, you know, the, there were two on the car fights. Oh, actually, three. Uh, the one that wasn't televised, but at least it's something that we, you know, something that I read. I think I told LB. Um, you know, with Darwin Price actually, after two years off, actually uh, winning his fight by TKO over Torres. You know, he had a he had a other he had a a comeback fight earlier this year that he won, I think, by TKO. But that was one of those career mode fights. This was the real fight right here, though. And yeah, got that TKO, so that's what's up. Yeah, and his, and his opponent was a Floyd fighter, TMT fighter too, undefeated. So that was that's a good look for Darren Price to actually get there now. Hopefully this leads to a televised uh, televised appearance next time out. Um, some where they get, where they put some fucking odds on his fight. <laughs> Jeez, like my goodness, like promoters, y'all really fucked up on that fight. Like, yeah, honestly, like y'all had one of the most evenly, you know, matched up fights, and y'all had it somewhere in the damn Nether Realm or some shit, another d- dimension or some shit. <laughs> like, like, I, like, like a nigga had to get cyborg and get the boom, boom tool shit. The dark side be on it to see this motherfucker. Like, yeah, it was one of those fights because Showtime used to do, you know, used to do, used to air those fights on YouTube. I don't know. Why. They didn't even show no highlights of it. Like, that's the crazy part. Like, they want nobody to see this fight. I hope somebody videos some of it in the, the audience or some shit. Like, yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, it, Showtime definitely has the footage of it, but what, what they do with it remains to be seen. You know, but uh, so he need he, he need to be a damn uh, a tank opponent, shit. Uh, facts, you know. One one forty should get get him on some Chris Airy, Um, I'm sorry, um, Andy Ruiz shit, and uh, get that quick turnaround. Like you don't need to stop training. Get him in there. Get him in there for that tank fight. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so but yeah, it, 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 you know, but I just had to acknowledge that because you know, Darren Price last time he was on TV. He suffered an unfortunate knee injury in a fight that he looked like he was fucking knees. In a fight that looked like he was getting ready to end too, you know. And it's just one of the, it was just, it was it was it was real unfortunate. So hopefully he does, you know, he, you know, he, he, he get, you know, he keeps he keeps it together and actually, you know, get, keeps active and actually, you know, eventually finds his way back to TV again. Um, oh. But the opener, the opener fight was cool, whatever, you know, uh, Michelle Rivera. AKA, you know, the, what is it, the Cuban Alley? He's Cuban, right? Yeah, he's, no, no, he's Dominican, excuse me, he's Dominican. Uh, Dominican, and then facing Jose Matias Romero. And uh, like I said, basically Rivera kind of sweet signs them up. Like, that's, that's basically, and it wasn't like Rivera did, like, land, like, Romero, for his credit, I mean, he has a chin, like, dude absorbed some punishment. You know, but he still kept he, he still kept coming forward. So it wasn't a boring fight to watch. But it was, it was I don't mind a sweet science fight like this where a guy has a good steady pace and he's landing hard shots every round and I didn't feel that Rivera needed to step it up to stop him because Romero was eating everything. He he was buzzed like maybe once or twice, but he was never hurt to the point where I'm like, damn, okay Rivera, get him out of there. So it was a good, solid, you know, boxing performance. You know, it wasn't some damn uh, fight of the year or nothing, but it, it didn't need to be for that type of performance. You know, no, it, 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 was it, it, it was a good fight. You know, it was a- he landed hard shots in the process. It wasn't just patty kicking this dude. Like he was landing some crazy uh, hard body shots, and and that right hand was busting busting through the guard. So mm-hmm. solid performance. You know, hope hope we get a uh, bigger fight from him next time and. Romero is, you know, good for TV. You know, he keeps coming and he throws shots. And well, I mean, Romero, concern. I mean, if you saw his fight against Isak Cruz, like, I mean, dude was dude fought disgusting in that fight. You know, and he made Cruz yeah. look terrible in doing so. So this was so this was an improvement. And Rivera, yeah, yeah Rivera seemed his English improved too. Because dude, I think dude is really dude really wants to cross over. Like besides yeah, the whole yeah. yeah besides the whole alley thing that he's on with his hair and never in the yeah. trunk. You know, 
I wonder how the Ali family even feels about that shit. I'm just he, he looks like Tito. I'm a tripper. He looks like Felix Trinidad to me. What the fuck? He told me. He don't look like no fucking chick. Like, maybe he need a Caesar cut or some shit. Like, well, he, 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 he looks like a young Julian Jackson to me. I, I can see the Julian Jackson. I can see the Ali. I just don't see this Tito shit. Put them, put them, put them, put them to the side. I, I think you're missing it. They look, they look like you a little bit. Let, let, let him get the boosy fade and that he might look like uh, Tito. <laughs> yeah, but, not, but right now he got, the, he got that fucking old Kong fucking Muhammad Ali 70, 60 nigga haircut. So he's yeah. really trying to push for the Ali and that nigga don't, don't stop talking either. <laughs> that nigga talk I mean, now. I mean, hey, I, I mean, if a, if a, if a, if a dude wants to work, I mean, because usually a lot, a lot of Dominican fighters don't really be on that, don't be trying to actually try to cross over like that. Yeah, some, 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 some let their fights fighting do what they do, and that's cool too. But I do I think really wants to, I think he wants people to really understand him, so I think that's why well, he's probably not, making I respect it. I respect it. Like, like he's trying to he's trying to branch out and make himself a name. Doing the whole yeah, you better thing. respect it, damn. You you let damn Canelo get away for years and saying speaking a whole nother language and <laughs> all the opportunities he had to fucking be speaking English. <laughs> But one like, uh, one one thing though, Rivera, I just don't see Rivera staying at one thirty five for very long. That dude is that dude was huge for that fucking way. He's like, yeah, nah. yeah, he's big for that way. Yeah, the, the, I mean, dude will eventually probably be like a, a welter <laughs> at least, you know. Yeah, but yeah. So I mean, hopefully if they do, they they move him towards a significant fight at one thirty five. So maybe he's gonna be operating there, but he ain't gonna last there. You know, he's still young. He's gonna outgrow that division pretty quickly. Put him in there with Ryan Garcia. <laughs> <laughs> Put him in there with with Matias or uh, the other Gary Russell. I need to see one of those. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Chill, chill, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean, dude, you know, I, I can't have y'all manage nobody. Y'all try to get niggas killed out here. <laughs> yeah, you're the upset the apple cart early. You like fuck? <laughs> we not even want to get apple juice and apple cider, nigga. We fucking up the apples right now. Chill. <laughs> that, that man makes some apple juice a little bit, you know? Right. <laughs> But uh, uh, I guess we could say next. <laughs> yeah. So the the fight everyone this was the fight everyone else was looking forward to, you know, drawn Boots Ennis versus Thomas Delorme. Uh, myself, I mean, I thought I mean this fight was not going to tell me too much. I mean, Delorme is what he is as a fighter. I mean, he's a decent test, but he also lost twice in a row. That was pretty much my excuse. Like, I didn't think this would. I, I didn't think this this fight would be anything to me like you know if i you thought it would go a little more rounds though i ain't gonna lie yeah, yeah. that was you know that was kind of shocking a little bit yeah and delorme and keep in mind delorme has went the distance with ugas who ugas struggled with a lot and nearly lost to and he gave jamal james a good fight over a distance and you know and he and he took stanionis the distance so the me, distance, yeah stanionis yeah, Stani too yeah. yeah so basically Putting hands all over jesse vargas too yeah, exactly. So, Delorme has some stripes at you know at, at welterweight. You know, has some, yeah, he's legit like, dangerous. Like you know, I remember um, cause I know people was like, well, you know, uh, Crawford dominated him. No, the fuck he did it. Like stop. <laughs> like dude, dude was fumbling around with this man for like three, four rounds until yeah. he got him out of there. Like <laughs> yeah, like, you yeah. can say he was losing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no. De- yeah, Delorme gave Crawford you know, all, like top three, probably gave him like a lot of trouble. Like, Crawford just managed to Cra- what, Crawford. It took Crawford a while to adjust to Delorme. Yeah, and once he yeah. did, he got him out of there quickly. Yeah, he was getting out box before he before he landed that shot. And fucking yeah, over. yeah. The, the down, the download, uh, he had to download it a couple times. Yeah, so it's so yeah, so yeah. The fact that uh, Delorme got pretty much he got taken out of there, like. And the funny thing too, because as I, as I was talking about this fight, I see Delorme is trying to raise a comment, uh, raise a complaint to the NC NSAC on the first knockdown. Why I don't know, but that shit looked like it was clean. <laughs> I mean, it don't matter if he still get knocked out the first round. The fuck? Yeah, it looked, it looked like the back of his ear, but he was done any of that. I mean, yeah, yeah and then after, I mean, he got up. The, the replay looked cleaner. I don't think he got hit in the back of the head. No, he didn't. He definitely did not get hit in the back of that. You know, but uh, but he got up, and then Delorme did land some right hands. Like, uh, Boots did, uh, I guess because he was too over-aggressive. I mean, Boots ate a couple right hands. You could see his head snap back from the shots. And then, but and it took him since he kept forward, and then he ended the fight with a, with, was a, I think it was a straight left or a right. 
was a, I think it was a left. I think it was a yeah, left. It was it was a left. left. He had a. It was a combo. It was actually a three piece. He had um. I think it was a left, then a right hook, and then a straight left. Like a left, like a straight, left, like strong left jab. It looked like that to kind of get him down. Nah, that was like a, a full left hand. That was no jab. Yeah, yeah, that was no jab. No, he, yeah, he. Oh he, no, he, he switched. Then he switched dance. That's what it was, right? He, I think he was a. Uh, he was in South yeah. when he got him. No? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah, he was. Well, yeah, that left. Yeah, because that, that had Marantz, and you saw it. And Delorme got sat down. Like he sat down in like stages. Like, yeah, dude. Yeah, dude was done after that one. He was just like, you know, he he got up at like ten, but I think the referee kind of waved that shit off. <laughs> so now, of course, no. Now, of course, Boots. Now, here's where Boots starts. You know, the overrating of Boots starts going a little crazy. Now. now Twitter and certain forums are like, oh, Boots can beat everybody, like anybody on the market. That's, I don't think that's Good true. Good fuck you, Lord. It's like, hey, hey, I'm tired on, of doing this. We did, we did this, we did this with Spence. Like, I'm tired of doing this again. Let him prove it, let him do it. Let him, let him do it, let him do it first. Uh, LB kind of put me on to think, to think the same thing. I mean, cause I remember LB was, I'm, I mean, I'm, and it's nothing against Boots because I think he's a very talented fighter. But I'm done giving giving fighters the crown before t- let them take it. Let's prove it. Prove I mean, it. honestly, I would favor him to beat Spence and Crawford right now, and Ortiz and Thurman. Like, I kind of, I kind of want to want to agree with that. But I, I don't, know. I don't, I don't, I, agree, I, don't, I don't, I don't agree. I don't, I don't think I favor him. I, I think, like, I think Porter, Thurman, I'm done. I'm done favoring inexperienced fighters. Like, I, think, like, <laughs> Thurman, I don't know. He got twenty. He got like 28 fights like that's experience enough 29, 29. you know what i mean like i i'm i'm done proving the guy that ever like because i've i've done it enough times with guys that i thought were going to be great and then they ended up either they 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 either did were great or they just ended up flopping I'm okay who was it who was it i right, i right, tell us who that was of uh, which ones the 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 the, the hits or the misses the guy oh, oh. no nah, the misses nigga. yeah the misses, the misses. Uh, Verdejo, yep. uh, J Rock, okay, Verdejo never looked as good as Boots. So <laughs> no, J Rock, I like, I thought they were, good, but they, they at the time they didn't prove it, and now, but, but J Rock never had the type of, he never fought the type of opposition people could hurt him before his, even Lubin's another one, yeah, Lubin, they never Lubin's the type one. of dangerous fighters before they got their shots. Like yeah. the Yippinets, the Lord made all these guys are capable of pulling upsets on boots. At least they could crack. At least they got boxing skills. All of that. Like I'm not see. I don't, I'm not seeing that from these guys like Spence and Crawford when they was coming up. They weren't beating guys like Boots is, and they they damn sure weren't dish ragging them like this. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think defense a little bit. Like you know, like. He gets hit a little flush, but maybe it's also the point where he just doesn't really respect the guy's power. But he definitely needs to keep his hands up, especially in southpaw. Yeah, and, and that, that, that's the only complaint because I was like, you know, I'm not saying Delorme does have some pop in his in his punches, but it's, it's one of those times where you know Boost cannot just rely on just taking a shot like that because he's got over aggressive. Because like I said, that's how people that's he's how knocking people, motherfuckers out. Like, oh my yeah. god, like no, you're right, people, you're right. Like, people is going overboard with the fucking damn. He needs to, he needs better defense. Dude. No, 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 nigga. I'm, I'm saying that I don't. I'm not talking about that. No, not you. Not you. Yeah. you know better. I'm talking about these other fucking Twitter damn um psychologists yeah. out there. Yeah, I know what you mean. You get hit twice in a fucking first round before you brutally stop somebody. Yeah, that's. I'm true. not complaining about your defense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, first of all, Delorme is world class. So mm-hmm. if a world class fighter gets a few shots on you before you knock him out. I mean that's boxing, right? I mean, are we gonna say, well, Floyd need to work on his defense because Victoriano Sosa put hands on him for like a couple <laughs> rounds? <laughs> like, you see how that sounds, right? Like, yeah, niggas, yeah, of course. Niggas want you to have like prime Mike Tyson killer instinct and power, but they want you to have uh, prime Sweet P Pernell Whitaker defense, <laughs> and they want you to display all this shit within three minutes of the first round. Uh, I feel you. That's but a lot I mean, to ask I mean, for. There's, there's gotta be some to critique. That's all. I mean, there's gotta be something to at least, you know, criticize. What he didn't he, he he didn't carry the fight long enough so I could get my damn prop bet. Yeah, I, <laughs> that's my only critique. Shit, like it, it was a perfect performance. He got hit twice. This is boxing. It, yeah, I gotta break it down in Golovkin voice. Like this box, this boxing. Like 
Exactly. The fuck? <laughs> big drama show. Big drama, big drama show. show. Uh, big drama show. You, you shoot fade. Fade shoot. <laughs> like what's up this money like sometimes you could just watch something and be like you know what that was quality yeah no it was, it was just run the twitter and be like hold on hold on hold on he, he let a fly land on his shoulder in the second round and it weighed it made its jab lower like <laughs> niggas be looking at all types of weirdo shit man like <laughs> yeah. i just want to look i just want to see him fight damn um one of the higher level guys or get whoever wins this damn um, WBA tournament because B- Butev looks like he the business and Stan Jonas look like they the business and those would be some great fights for fucking uh, Boots but and, and that is, Boots right now is ready for that or, or title shots yeah and that's also a perfect segue into the main event uh, you know with Jamal James and Brad Zeff Butev now Butev if, like I said, the only time you may have actually seen him fight, as I mentioned before in the preview, is if it was on, on the zone where it was a fight that he lost, but his, the person that beat him tested uh, pop dirty. And it was actually a, it was actually a good fight. So yeah. So Batev was a, a live dog, and then Jamal, and Jamal James obviously, like I said, he's he's like basically in terms of what you call a B level dude is dude is quality. Dude needed that dude always needed that one fight to actually bring him into the A levels. Uh, yeah, but he was always a he was a good quality solid fighter, and this fucking fight was an exercise in work rate and pressure, you know. And poor Jamal James, like he it wasn't like he tried, man. I mean, dude was landing some sick uppercuts on Butev, like really, back like, back. like it's like four or five, six of them. <laughs> yeah, but Butev, uh, and it's not in Jamal James. He's not a big puncher, but he can if he cracks you with an uppercut. Most of the time, these guys these guys go. Or they go down, like he. Well, they at least damn visibly hurt. Yeah, no, Patel, Patel, he he just kept going. The dude moved forward, and his body work, like I don't think I've ever seen Jamal James. Yeah, he hit him work. with some real, real thudding shots to the body. Oh yeah. man, he was, yeah, he was putting that water well in there. Yeah, he was. Yeah, yelling. yeah, dude got tenderized. <laughs> dude got completely tenderized in that fight, though. And it, 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 and it was getting to the point where it was not to the body too, but you can see one thing about Butev too. Butev has some of the sneakiest hooks I've ever seen. Like they're like lightning fast. Like 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 dude will dude will faint with um, a right hand and then throw a lightning fast left hook or some shit like that. And it was landing repeatedly. Like it was like Jamal couldn't even know he didn't know what to do with that shit. And it was not with the hooks too, but he, he did it with both hands. Like do do will let that other hand uh, go out briefly, faint, and then come with a with a, with a hard hook, man. Like dude was like, God damn, yo. This- but the, but the reason for that is because Jamal James is it's his stature, really. Like he has his whole unsturdy, wet noodle type of vibe when he boxes, mm-hmm. and so if you just cut distance on him and just mug him. You really fucking kind of could control him and manhandle him, cause he kept coming over. Butev kept coming over with that right hook that he would jump with. Yeah. And Jamal James would get caught by it all the time because first of all he had his left hand down instead of pumping the jab. Yeah. Second of all, he's fucking standing right in front of him. Mm-hmm. So it's like when when you do that. You leave yourself open for like them unorthodox type of angles and shit for someone to attack you with. Cause Jamal James, he's not the most like reactive guy, like reflexive type of guy. He's, nah. he's better suited, you know, coming at you or moving around. Yeah, like Jamal James is a good in fighter though, but when you but if you pressure him too much, dude will either start uh I mean, he'll he'll either start clinching or start turning away from him, which I don't know why he didn't get a point took away because he did that way too many fucking times. You know, dude would turn away. Oh, uh, don't start me on that. That ref was all over the place. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, so I would say, but Butev was being rough and 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 going like too anxious. I'm like, dude, you got the fight. The fight's in the bag for you, like. Yeah. Chill before the forearm and then all all that rough shit. Cause I know I was seeing it. I was getting a little agitated about it. Cause I'm like, hold on, we getting a good fight. I don't want somebody to catch an elbow or, or get a foul and it ruins the fight. Like let it just happen. So 
Mm-hmm. I, I, and like, and you know what? Too. I know I'm probably in the minority. I wasn't even bitching about the the point. I just felt the rough gave the point away on some bullshit because he did. I know Boutte yeah. was them should have been um reprimanded for landing low blows. Mm-hmm. That should have been a warning. Like two or three of them. Right? I thought that, that should have been a warning, not just a point off rip. Did he warn him before? I don't recall. He never warned. That's me. He barely warned him for low blows, and then when he took the point away, it was for something totally different. It just it almost felt like the guy was so rough. The, the refs just say, you know what? Fuck this. The point deduction. And yeah, I could yeah, understand yeah. that sometimes <laughs> because sometimes a motherfucker be just frustrating you with that shit. Me, I hate sparring a motherfucker who just super rough like that because I feel like I'm gonna like, I'm gonna body slam this nigga. Fuck you. Like, mm-hmm. like if the ref don't do nothing, then I'm gonna do something. Like, and, and honestly, I feel like that's the type of attitude Jamal James need to have sometime. Like. That fuck it, you ain't gonna just manhandle me type shit. But he kept kind of just being passive with it. Like even in the clinches, like mm-hmm. Boutte was working him over in the clinches, hooks to the body. I'm like Jamal James, do something, dude. Like yeah, he, he eventually he, he, he allowed himself to get ate up to the point where he was bleeding from his nose and bleeding from his mouth. And uh, it took and a was, Holyfield beating. Yeah, and I, I, and I, it was only gonna get worse, and then. In, in, like in, in the worst thing too, Jamal James gasped from the beat because the body work and the fact that he's probably out for a minute, like you know, it gassed him out. Like he, and the, he and the wrestling and the roughness, like the all rough that rough, rough shit. Yeah. That's how Ricky Hatton used to have guys ready to fall apart in the in the in the damn later half of the fight because he's so aggressive. He stay on you. He's working the body constantly. He jabbing with you. His footwork doesn't leave you alone. So just. Being bombarded by all of that shit. By the time you get to the eighth, ninth round, you're like, ah, oh, fuck. If you don't knock me out, I won't even try hard. Like, I just want to see the bell yeah. and be done with this motherfucker. Yeah, you know, and yeah, and like, and when the fight was actually stopped too, and most people were thinking that it was, it was a premature stoppage. I, I didn't think so. I, like, I mean, it, Jamal James was just, I mean, he was, first of all, he was getting his ass whooped by this time. Like, dude was getting all kind of phase. It was like, bad. It was bad timing, but it was then inevitable. Like, the, the yeah, ref is just one of those guys who just, he off. He want to be in the video. He wanted to look. Well, I mean, he didn't really, he complained a little bit, but he didn't, like, really, you know, complain too much. We're at a point where he's like, all right, you know. Yeah, no, yeah, James, yeah. James collapsed in that ref's arms, like he, he, like he was done. Like, dude. and then he realized, like, oh shit, hold on, hold on, I still wanted to fight. I gotta show people. Like, then he saw a little protest, but he saw a little nah. bit. But he was he 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 he, he was chilling in that boy's arms like Zabeda's brother for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but at least in this particular case, you know, do 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 got worked over, so it wasn't like you know. Like he, he like it, the ref has to do that because you know if he fell to the canvas or anything like that you know liability thing. You yeah, know. I, don't, I don't think it was a bad stop, but you might say the timing was off. But was to, off, to even drive the point home even more, you had people complaining about the fucking Shakur Stevenson Herring stopping. Yeah, and, and Herring took a way worse beating to me. Yeah. Yeah. At least Jamal James was competitive. Like Jamal James, you could give him a couple rounds, and, and and he was landing some bombs. Herring was nowhere, never in that fight. And, I don't you know. know. And then people's like, hold on, let's see. Herring was still, you know, could do something. I'm like, like I want this man dead. Like the fuck? Yeah, I'm saying. Let this like, man go go home to his his lovely family, nigga. Like chill. Yeah, and the worst thing is Jamal James said they said that he, he, like, he was gonna get married in a couple weeks. I'm like, damn, like. So it's like, yeah, you really want this dude to get like all fucked up? I mean, dude's, dude's wedding photos will be him looking like Martin after Tommy Hearns and shit, nigga. So it's just like, like, no, don't don't let them, don't let don't let him get beat up when he doesn't need to. Like, there was nothing that was going on with that dude. Like, he Jamal James was gassed. He didn't have the offensive power, and you know, and, and he was just gonna get brutalized. So, yeah, his, his punches were lacking that starch. Like two, maybe two rounds before the stoppage, maybe even three rounds. Right. Yeah. So I mean, so but, but shout out to Butev, who came in there. He was the underdog in this fight, you know, and he came in there and pretty much now made himself uh, uh, a player. Now, I mean, now of course he's in the WBA tournament. He's gonna he's gonna get the winner of Ugas and Stanionis, which is gonna be interesting. Both are, both are interesting fights. Whereas Stanionis and Butev will probably be fight of the year type of shit. Yeah, depending on who's, you know, if it's going to be power or work rate. 
And then Ugas, you'll see Ugas will crack from that type of pressure. <laughs> so, from Butea. So, yeah, I mean, I haven't. Yeah, that well, Ugas was, got his hands full with Stan Jonas. Yeah, he does. It actually, I tell you, Stan Jonas and, and uh, Butea ever end up in a fight? Man, that's fight of the year off rip. Yeah, I'm thinking, uh, uh, but I think I'm somehow favoring Stan Yos, uh, Ugas versus over Stan Yos, though. But I gotta see how it plays out. Man, Stan Yos is gonna put his foot in there, Ugas' ass. Yeah, that, like, like I said, that's the reason why Ugas is not like does Ugas yeah. does not want to risk the payday because he knows Stan Yonis for all he says, he said, you know, oh, Stan Yonis is like a 16 fight, 15 fight novice or whatever. He knows, he he knows that Stan Yonis is dangerous. Like it's not. Like the thing with Stan Yonis, he's more technical than Boutier. Like, like Stan Yonis is like he's text he's textbook. He throws all the clean punches the right way, but he's still aggressive aggressive as hell too. Mm-hmm. He boxes you up like, <laughs> like that's a problem, man. Yeah, so Ugas is a, and like now because if Ugas beats Stan Yonis and then beats Boutier, then yeah, let him let, let him go after let him go after Spence. You know, and see what see what he can do. Like, I mean, yeah, I, I, we don't know when Spence coming back. Then he's gonna be good and all that shit. Like no one, no one. Look, man. To be honest, we rather Spence come back and fight the winner of Crawford Porter than anybody else, unless it's Keith Thurman. Like, as far as surpri- fights at one point, I wouldn't. Seven. Go ahead. Oh, Sorry, my man. No, I was saying like, as far as fights at one forty seven. Like I'd rather see Spence fight the winner of Crawford Porter or Keith Thurman. I wouldn't be surprised, and this is just—I I don't think it will. I mean, I'm not saying it will happen, but just something that uh, you know, in the back of my head, I wouldn't be surprised if Ugas just drops the belt and fights Spence anyway without the belt. Mm-hmm. I guess I thought about that happening, but then I'm like, I don't Spence think he's somebody. Even- Cause Cause I don't I think he's fucking think. gonna get the bread he want if he does that. Cause it's not gonna be unification yeah. fight. Wait, he don't have a name like that. Like who cares about fucking Ugas? The Ugas have. The, I mean, Spence has two belts still, right? Or did they? He didn't drop one yet, did he? No, he has two belts still. He has two belts. Yes, I'm saying. So he could go up. Again. I mean, he could fight for the other belts. Like, that's some whole shit. That's some ducking shit. Yeah. I mean, I'm not gonna say that he's ducking if he fights Spence because Spence is better than both those two. So it, nah, it, 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 it wouldn't be, but he would have to fight if, if the Spence fight doesn't happen, and he fights somebody else, and they're not on the level of Stan Jonas or, or Boutier. Oh yeah, no, 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 definitely. Yeah, I, 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 I'm, 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 I'm just saying this. I mean, my whole thing is th- this whole scenario is under the guise that he would be facing Spence. If not, then, then, then. then Nah, fuck yeah. it. Like that would be stupid. It, it sounds like he's whining that he got to face a tough fight for once. Like, like yeah. you, you had your Pacquiao fight. Like, okay, you know. I mean, like I said, like I said, like I said in the last cast, I, I, I understand where Ugas is coming from because there's a lot of inconsistencies, and the WBA is just on some whole shit in itself. So uh, it's just, it's, it's just a whole mess, really. Yeah, I know, sure. I know uh, Jamal James is probably mad at the WBA. He's like, I gotta fight this motherfucker. Like, right, yeah. So, I mean, Jamal J- I mean, at least he took his loss in stride, you know. Yeah. It like, you know, wasn't his night for tail. You know, he slew yeah, Nobody him. cried over that shit either. <laughs> Facts. You know, so yeah, it, 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 was, it, it, was, it was it was a perfect end to a good night for PBC. That was a, that was an excellent fight. You know, but they have definitely, you know, I, I, you know, it'll be interesting to see, you know, how, you know, you know who Batev actually faces um, in the you know in the finals of the WBA's World Tournament. Like I said, tur- I love tournaments, so this one may this one might turn out to be you know something something uh, interesting to watch. So it's all good. So yeah, you know yeah, PBC and Top Rank they killed that shit this weekend. Some and really fade. some fades. We got it was nice. We got some nice fades. Fade, some fight of the year, some knockout of the Dude, year. Who knows? We're gonna need that this weekend with them. Um, Canelo and Plant in that damn on the card. Jeez, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, I mean, I'm still waiting for them to say movie theaters because else I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be here after, I have to, I have to buy this shit because unfortunately I can, I can't do the streaming thing. Not, not with someone who actually wants to actually watch this with me. Um, yeah, I feel you, but it, it, it all, you'll feel better once you see. Uh, you know, a certain Caucasian fighter's hand raised. 
Uh, the the you, which, which one? They both look like Caucasians. Nah, the, the freckleless <laughs> one. The, the one with the <laughs> freckles. <laughs> the white chocolate. White chocolate. Yeah, they both look like some damn Caucasians to me. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> nah, oh, man, man. You, you put a plant in, in Canelo side by side. One of them's definitely the Mexican to me. Yeah, no, one's a spicy Caucasian, the other one's a, a, a mountain Caucasian. Like, <laughs> fucking mountains. <laughs> moonshine. He, one enjoys Modelo, the other one enjoys moonshine. Yep. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> you know, but on, uh, unfortunately, on the PBC side, there was some other news that came out this uh, this, uh, this past week. Oh, let me, 